Hello. Let's talk about the six main tips you're gonna need before you try to create a sketch. The first tip has to do with focus and drawing for the entire time. Before you sketch, take a deep breath and prepare to put all of your energy into the drawing. Get calm, get collected, and commit to drawing for the entire 10 minutes. Once you lock your focus in, you will be in the zone. This is also called flow state. This is when your ideas and skills are flowing freely onto the page. You will not be able to get into flow state, grow your drawing skills, or produce a worthwhile sketch if you're distracted. During sketch time, quiet your mind so that you're not thinking of a million different things. End any conversations you may be having with a neighbor and let all of your energy be focused on your drawing. The second tip to creating a good sketch is to avoid drawing figures like Stick Sammy and his pet stick dog, Sticky. Goodbye. The problem with stick figures is they're boring to draw and they're boring to look at. So we need to draw our figures with shapes instead of sticks. This can be done by drawing boxes around the stick skeleton or you can start with the boxes themselves. You can also use curvy Squidward style shapes to create a body that is simple but not a stick body. When it comes to faces, instead of just drawing two dots and a line for the mouth, try circling around your dots to create eyes with a pupil, a banana shaped mouth, and some simple ears. As you go, your faces can get more and more complex and unique. Once you've mastered drawing simple characters that are not stick figures, try drawing characters in different positions. For example, a side view. Draw a bump for the nose on one side of the face, put the eye on the side of the face, and draw the arms and legs swinging, one in front and one slightly behind. The more complex positions you draw characters in, the better. For example, arms up holding some objects, or one arm bent, one arm back, one leg bent, one leg straight, for a running position. Or try to draw one of the trickiest positions, someone sitting. A slight bend in the legs with diagonal thighs and then a regular upper body. And you'll have a guy sitting on a park bench. Another good challenge is to try drawing very small people without resorting to stick figures. Little guys on a bleacher, little guys in a car or in a window using shapes, never sticks. And the same goes for animals. Remember Sticky the Stick Dog? Let's see if we can do a little better. Well, kind of looks like a pig, but we're getting there. Let's make up for that dog pig with a quick unicorn, and then on to the next tip. The third sketch skill has to do with overlapping subjects. You can see here, you have two flowers and a heart, but all the subjects are separate. They don't overlap. And it would be more interesting if they did. For example, big heart in the middle, let one stem cross behind it, let the other stem cross behind all of that, and you end up with a much more interesting composition. So overlaps are good. Here's another example of a decent drawing with no overlaps. Now, let's trick it out and let the subjects overlap each other. Now this drawing is cooler, but notice we do have some problems. You can see through the octopus's tentacles, you can see through the seaweed. We need to get rid of this x-ray vision. There's a few ways you can do this. You can erase the x-ray vision and then redraw any areas you need to. Make sure you figure out which area needs to be in front and which area needs to be behind. You can also plan out what's in front and what's behind as you draw and pick your pencil up so that you never draw the x-ray vision areas in the first place. The last way you can get rid of x-ray vision is to shade over the x-ray vision area. This doesn't always work, but if it's a possibility to shade in the subject that's in the front, you can do it. One more quick example of overlaps in a drawing. Remember, overlaps are good. In this example, they're necessary to make sure that the hand really looks like it's grabbing the bottle. But we have to get rid of them, so I went back and erased the x-ray vision through the fingers. Then add a few details, and voila. The fourth sketch skill has to do with where to put the ground in your drawing. In this example, 
I've used the bottom of the page as the ground, effectively using the page like it's a box that the drawing lives in. This is not how you want to use the ground in a drawing. Now if you're doing a little bit better, you will draw the ground instead of using the bottom of the page, and you'll set everything on top of that ground line, maybe even thinking of the area underneath the ground as under the ground, like there's roots and dinosaur bones under there. This is also not a good way to think of the ground line in your drawing. When you draw the ground line in your drawing, also called the horizon line, you need to make sure that it is above and behind the backmost subject, the rest on the ground in your drawing. In this example, the backmost subject is the bottom edge of the house, so I'm making sure that the ground line is at least a little bit above and behind the bottom edge of the house. Understanding how to use the horizon line, the line between the sky and the ground, is crucial to creating effective sketches. But the horizon line rule also applies to indoor scenes. For example, the line between the wall and the floor. Notice in this example, all of the subjects are resting on the line. The feet, the legs of the table, the bottle of Coke, all resting on the horizon line. When they should rest below it, like this, it's a much more natural look. Notice the feet, the table legs, even the bottle of Coke are now resting below that indoor horizon line. Let's check out the difference. So make sure you drop your subjects down below that line. It will just look so much better. If I was to draw an indoor scene, I know that I'm not using the horizon line properly if all the subjects are stacked on top of a line. For example, the computer stacked on top of the table and the table legs stacked right on top of the horizon line of the room. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's start by drawing a rectangular shape that is the top of the table. So we have a surface to actually set the computer or TV screen on. Then once we've drawn the legs of the table, position the horizon line a little bit behind those legs so that it really looks like the table is resting on the floor. The fifth sketch skill is to fill the page. You may have a cool subject on the page, but if there are a bunch of fist-sized empty areas, you'll need to add some additional subjects. For example, I could fill in that big spot on the right with a Kmart. I could put a light pole on the left. I could fill in the parking lot with some old cars and mud puddles. And pretty soon, there are no fist-sized empty areas left on the page. I did eventually fill the page in that drawing, but it took a while and it took a lot of subjects. A faster way to fill the page is to draw big. Instead of drawing a bunch of stuff around that main subject, I could just draw the main subject at a larger size, like that. Or I could go even bigger, so big that whole parts of the drawing, like the hair, actually hang off the page. When parts of your drawing don't fit on the page and are cut off, that is called cropping. And it's good. Don't be afraid to crop your subjects and to draw them big. When you draw your subjects big, they're eye-catching and you have plenty of room for cool details, like a cracked screen on that phone and a curly cord. The sixth and final sketch skill is to put details on your subjects. A tree is a subject. Put leaves, apples, bark texture. Those are details and will bring your subjects to life. Hair, outfits, jewelry on a person, or bricks, smokestacks, and cracks in the concrete on a building are all examples of details. You can take a really basic, kind of boring drawing and make it amazing just by tricking it out with details everywhere. Bricks on the wall, shingles on the roof, grass, cobblestones, a unicycle in the yard, little flowers, a river in the field, raindrops coming down from the clouds, a vine growing up the side of the house, and all of a sudden, a boring drawing becomes amazing. So now that you know all this, one question remains. What do I draw? When you try to come up with a creative idea for a drawing, you may find your brain going into this mode. I 
think really hard, what's interesting, what's funny, be funny, be interesting, no, be scary. Ah, come on, think, think, think. Don't approach it like this. It will cause the creative flow in your brain to shut off. Instead, try thinking like this. To come up with those entertaining ideas, all you have to do is relax your brain. They're already in there. Your life is full of entertaining experiences and uh, funny little random things you can pull out. You just have to relax your mind and almost let your mind go blank so that those little things can rise to the surface. So creativity really feels more like this. Mm, uh, otter, an otter, you could draw an otter. And maybe it could be uh, having a sword fight with a buffalo. And it could be in the wild, wild west. It could be a cowboy in the background about to lasso him. And to come up with that idea, all I did was just let my mind go blank and just start letting the, the thoughts just pour out. And once you get good at this, it's possible to just do this all in your head without writing anything down. But uh, when you're first starting, it's helpful to make a list. So you can start by just writing a list, and we're gonna do this digitally on the Chromebooks, but you can start by just writing a list of the first 10 words that pop into your head. And then we're gonna use those 10 words to come up with a creative idea for a sketch. All right, so let's go over to the computer and try this out. After this video, I'll put a Google Classroom code on the board. You can log on to that classroom and click the sketchbook brainstorming assignment to open this form. The first question on the form says to type a list of the first 10 words that come to mind. Remember to just relax your mind and just start typing. Any 10 words that come to mind will be perfect. My words were grass, animal, diamonds, flip flops, peanut butter, dolphin, spatula, cardboard, nightmare, and cupcake. Now narrow down that list into the three most interesting words and then write those down again. I chose camel, diamonds, and cupcake. Now we're gonna take those three words and turn them into an actual scene that we could draw. So I'm gonna start with the camel and I'm gonna have it doing something with the diamonds. Uh, for example, the diamonds could be uh, resting on its humps, right? A camel with diamonds on its humps. And let's have that camel doing something and we wanna have the cupcake, so. Uh, a camel with diamonds on its humps eating a cupcake. Now that's a pretty good idea for a sketch. But the last question says, take the sentence you formed above and add it, tweak it, make it stranger, funnier, more emotional, or more challenging. So basically, we're going to take that sentence and add to it to amp it up to make it even more creative and even more interesting. So I'm going to say a camel with multiple humps, right? More humps, more interesting. And it's going to be, um, the diamonds are still on the humps, okay? And eating the cupcake... But let's see if we can make that a little better. Before it eats the cupcakes, let's have it jumping something. Maybe jumping a crater on the moon. There we go. I like that. And it's jumping the crater on the moon to try to get to the cupcake. And uh, the cupcake, how could we amp that up? Let's have the cupcake being held by an alien. Now that's an awesome scene. A camel with multiple humps and diamonds on each hump jumping a crater on the moon to get to a cupcake held by an alien. All right, so we're almost ready to draw this. Let's go ahead and submit the assignment. And we can start drawing. So I'm starting off with a nice big subject. Now that I have my creative idea, I'm kind of done with that part of it. Now I'm uh, going back into my sketch skills. So I'm drawing big, I'm filling the page. Uh, making sure that that diamond is sitting on the hump. That's kind of a horizon line skill and an overlap skill there. I'm going to go in and put a crater kind of behind and underneath the camel to make it look like it's jumping over it. That's a good overlap there. And he's going for that cupcake. He's a hungry little camel. And there's the alien that is holding that cupcake on the moon. Give him a nice kind of traditional alien face there. And the alien is drawn large and cropped off the side of the page. Let's give the horizon line of the moon in the background. Nice American flag where the uh, astronauts landed there. A few more craters filling in those empty areas, adding details. Adding another subject in that bottom right corner because it was empty. 
little alien hanging out in the crater. Just add another little astronaut over off to the side there. Now I'm going to go in and just fill in any empty areas, add some uh, planets, sun, stars in the sky, add some detail fur and little detail rocks on the moon, and there we have it. All right, so that is the full process. How to make a creative sketch, or how to come up with a creative sketch idea, and then create it using the sketchbook skills.